President Obama kicked the budget battle up a notch today by making it clear that he would not accept the short-term stopgap bill. And by emphasizing that Republicans have gotten everything they wanted, Obama may have thrown House Speaker John Boehner off his game a little bit. After the president spoke, Boehner could only manage a vague, sweaty, nervous-sounding press conference where he had this bizarre admission. The White House is proposing uh, uh, cuts that uh, are far beyond uh, things that uh, we would imagine. Uh, and so we want to get an agreement, and we want to keep the government open. Why did he just admit that the White House has given them more than they wanted? But he's right. They have given in over and over again. I mean, I'm, I don't get it. Like, if you're a Republican at this point, not like a Tea Party who's like, I want a billion, a trillion, a gazillion, a Brazilian amount of cuts. If you're a real Republican, I mean, if somebody hands you the queen, why don't you take it? At this point, shouldn't you be frustrated at Boehner? What's his real motivation? We're going to talk about that in a second. But even though it's the Republicans who are obviously holding up the budget, the American people are apparently are split on who to blame if the government shuts down on Friday. A Pew poll found that 39% of people would blame Republicans and 36% would blame the Obama administration, while 16% would blame both. It was even closer in a Washington Post poll where Republicans and the Obama administration each got 37%. I I'm stunned by that. <laughs> that how, could you, how could you look at those things and go, oh yeah, they're being as obstinate. Look, I I've told you over and over again, you know, we had at first, 40 billion given in by the uh, Obama administration got no credit for it, and then four billion, and then six billion, and then 20 billion, and then another three billion, and then the Republicans haven't moved at all. How could it possibly be even? Well, there's a second answer to that. But look, let me give you some perspective. Democrats appear to be in much worse shape than they were leading up to the last government shutdown in 1995. Back then, 46 percent of people said they'd blame the Republicans, and only 27 percent said the Clinton administration would be at fault. So what happened here? Why is it so much different today than it was back then? I gotta be honest with you. It's because one side isn't making its case. We showed you the clips in the first segment. The Republicans come out and they're like, it's their fault, it's their fault. They're being unreasonable and they're shutting the government down. You ask the president and he's like, I don't know. I don't wanna blame anybody. But you're in politics. You got to make your case. Otherwise, how do people know? And it turns out, look at the polls. They don't know. They're like, I don't know who's at fault. That's crazy. <laughs> Somebody's got to change that dynamic, and that somebody is the president. All right, now joining me is David Sirota. He's a syndicated columnist and author of the book, Back to Our Future. And also with us is Ryan Grimm, congressional correspondent for the Huffington Post. Ryan, I want to start with you. I mean, look, I keep saying it's crazy. Boehner, you give him exactly what he wanted back in February. He says, no, I want more. You give him a little more, and he says, no, I want $7 billion more today. Does he not want a deal? Well, first of all, he's obviously been paying attention to this White House over the past couple of years, and he, and he knows that he can keep getting more and more and more as, as, far, as, as long as he drags this out. But it, fundamentally, what he's doing is he's crafting his budget with, with the audience uh, in mind of, of his Tea Party caucus. And as long as he's doing that, as long as he's trying to pass a bill through the House with only Republican votes, he's not going to get it through the Senate. And this isn't a serious negotiation until he decides that he's going to have to pick up, say, 40, 50 Democratic votes and then start whipping Republicans hard because I just don't see how there's a path that goes from 218 Republicans and then over to the Senate and gets enough Democratic support to also be able to pass there and then get to the White House because the, the Tea Party is going to want too many cuts in order, you know, to, so this and the Senate Democrats aren't going to go along with that. Well, so, Ryan, un, so until, I mean, you know, until he abandons that, is this is this is just strange, right? But does that mean like, is there some chance he actually wants to shut down? Does he want to say to the Tea Party, look at this, I shut it down for however long, two days, right. a week, two weeks, two months, I don't know. Then then he goes and back uh, goes back and negotiates, right. but gets his bona fides with the with the Tea Party. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what's in his mind, but but that would make sense uh, tactically because then he can say, look, I, I did everything I could. Uh, Senate Democrats wouldn't go for it. They shut the, and, and we shut the government down. And so that, that's that's some some red meat for the Tea Party. Then after a couple days of that, they see the ramifications. And then he comes back, cuts a deal with ha with some House Democrats. It goes to the Senate, goes to the White House. And then perhaps the, the Tea Party wing uh, of his conference will kind of give him a pass for negotiating with Democrats because they'll say, well, the guy did shut the government down. We got to give him that. All right, David, I want to go to you. I mean, 
when you see the president here and he comes out and this was a big deal he wasn't supposed to come out he comes out and he says look 33 billion and that's it do you believe him do you think he's going to stand his ground at 33 billion or do you think he'll give in more well, I don't understand why we should believe him. I mean, this is a president who started out the budget debate by conceding the very terms of the debate by saying the first thing the the first position the administration took was saying we need to freeze domestic spending entirely. So he has been giving and giving and giving and not drawing a line in the sand. And I think the Republicans, frankly, as a negotiating tactic, uh, why should they stop? Right? The Tea Party folks are probably saying, why should we stop? We'll pass the farthest right bill possible through the House. We'll ram it through the House. It'll go over to the Senate. It'll get a they'll go into conference committee uh, and they'll be starting on the House side with the most extreme conservative position possible. So in, in many ways, I think what we're seeing is that the Republicans really understand negotiation 101 and the Obama administration either doesn't understand negotiation 101 or is actually ideologically with some of the more hardcore conservative policies and ideologies of the Tea Party that is controlling the House of Representatives. Let me build on David's point a little bit and, and, and give this question to you, Ryan. I mean, this is the first time the president has come out in public and said, this is where I stand. He didn't say that in the beginning where he's like, if he had come out and gave a big speech, I am giving away $40 billion in cuts. Now the Republicans have to come to me. It would have been very public, right? And then when the Republicans didn't come to him, well, then they would have seemed unreasonable. But he didn't do that in public. And he didn't do that until now. And now that he's done this in public, if he doesn't concede anything more going forward, isn't he, I mean, look, I wouldn't concede a, a nickel, right? But you know how President Obama is. Isn't he going to feel like, well, in order to seem reasonable, we should give them at least a couple more billion? Yeah, I mean, w whatever the administration has been doing for the past couple of months clear clearly hasn't worked because we're now in a situation where we have, you know, almost 9% unemployment with a lot of economists saying that what we need is to stimulate the economy and instead Congress is doing the exact opposite. So so, so something isn't working. The, the, the administration has accepted the argument, as David said, that what we need are cuts now. Just a few a few months ago, people were still acknowledging the fact that the, that, that the uh, economy could use more stimulus and the administration was saying while we're for long-term cuts we want to get the we want to get the budget order in the in the long term in the short term we don't want to damage this fragile recovery now here we are all of a sudden talking about cutting billions and billions of dollars from uh, programs that really do actually uh, cut cut deep into what into what's happening and and they're and they're uh, and it, it's not a controversial thing to say that these cuts will cost thousands of jobs Mark Zandi I think his figure was 700,000 jobs he's a, an advisor to John McCain. So, you know, so this, this is like basic economics here. No, but and, and look, the thing is, they're holding the economy hostage because if the economy loses jobs, Republicans then turn around and say, oh, look at all, it's all Obama's fault. He couldn't create jobs and they try to get their guy into the White House. Whereas Obama thinks I, I, he's desperate to create jobs. He can't risk a shutdown. Yeah. So they, they have all the advantage. Given that, David, last question to you. You know, you see how this is developed. You see what Ryan pointed out there, which is a great point. What does that uh, tell us about what might come in 2012? Because now we've got the giant battle, the $4 trillion, $6 trillion battle coming up for that budget. Is that a sign of terrible things to come in terms of concessions from the Democrats in that battle? I absolutely think so. I think that it's, it's really tragic, and I keep going back to the terms of the debate. We are not having a discussion about how to stimulate the economy. We're having a discussion about how to cut, 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 at a cost of what most economists think are going to be at least tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of jobs. Put that rhetorical frame into the superheated cauldron of presidential politics, where the Republican nominee is going to be saying even more cuts, more cuts, more cuts, and President Obama, who has said, yes, 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 I will give up these cuts, I will continue continue to give up these cuts and we are in a political downward spiral that I think is going to have tragic ramifications for the for the budget and for the economy in the country uh, in 2012. All right, David Sirota and Ryan Grimm, thank you both for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Jack.